I mean, it's kind of like the NFL, right? Like the mm. no fun league. Like, right. <laughs> like it's becoming a little bit more and more of that. Mm. But at the same time, at least they're letting them play now. Like we were, we were fortunate to experience the playoffs and the finals last year. Mm. And you can just see such a difference in the physicality of play. What happened to like, there was like David Robinson. There was like, that was a team Elijah mm. Like there was like a lot of seven footers, Patrick Ewing. Um, I'm missing a bunch of yeah. uh, Robert Parrish. I mean, there was a list. Wow, but, he went way back. Yeah, there's there's tons of like seven footers, and and I know now that there's still kind of resurgence of some seven footers, but those guys were big and they were fucking amazing. They were so athletic, super athletic and super strong. But it was all about contact, mm -hmm. and it was about getting as close to the rim as humanly possible. Now it's about skill, yeah, and so dude. that's where you're seeing some seven footers that can actually jack threes, that can bounce the wow. ball. Like that's the crazy part when you got like a Kevin Durant who's oh, Jesus a phenomenal, I mean, a phenomenal human being. Um, or a specimen, I should say. But, I mean, you got guys like that with guard capabilities. Mm. It's changed the game because now you can just jack up scores. <laughs> That's crazy. Right? Do they have, like, goalies anymore? You know, because, like, I remember you could have, like, no skill, but if you can block shots, like, you're, oh, you, you, right, you find right. spot on a team. Like, I would say this. If you're if you're extremely tall and extremely athletic and can catch a lob and protect the rim, you can find a roster. Mm. You can find a roster. Because those don't grow on trees. You know, you can find a roster. <laughs> How do you deal with these athletes uh, just being so tall? You know, like when you when you get into training and you start, you know, coaching yourself, you know, it's like, all right, well, I organize my body this way and I lift this way. Not too bad. Then you start talking with other people and you're like, okay, when you squat, you get your knees out, keep your back flat. When you deadlift, keep your back flat. You know, these kinds of things. And person's 5'7", and it works out okay. And every once in a while, you got to like have them do corrective exercises to make sure the back is flat, but you're right. dealing with guys that are six eight, six nine, guys that are seven feet. Someone that's six foot nine and two hundred and thirty pounds. Right. Like that's a body type that you probably before you started working with basketball players, probably never even worked with before or seen before. Now the knee is caving in, the back is rounding, and it's not a short and stumpy power lifter back. <laughs> right. It's this long ass torso of like a real athlete. So how do, how do you coach these guys up and train them? That's a great question. Uh, really, it just comes down to physics in some form or fashion, right? I mean, at the end of the day, they're still humans. You're like, all right, guys, I got it. We're not squatting, <laughs> and we're not deadlifting. No, and here I, we go. I definitely <laughs> disagree with that. We those are the most potent lifts we mm. can experience for the body. So to have the most powerful stress response adaptation, I need those heavy lifts. Mm. I just need it in different forms. I love a zercher squat. I think it gets into your center of mass. Guys can move it better. Why? Because I drop their center of mass. So, yeah, it's a little bit different than having it a higher load, mm. higher up on the body. And a normal barbell zercher squat is what you're talking about? Yes, here? sir. Or you modify? Okay. Yeah, yes, okay. sir. So, basically, in the crook of the arms, holding it out. Now, obviously, what is the limiting factor? An upper back. Well, I think these guys need upper backs, don't they? Mm -hmm. So, is that really what I'm going to lose out on? Like, I'm developing an upper back, but not getting the legs, quote-unquote, as much? It's an interesting take. A uh, zercher squat is interesting because... Uh, you have the weight in the crooks of your elbows, but I would say that you could have like a quote unquote dirtier squat form yes. with a movement like that, right? <laughs> and, and not really pay a huge cost. It's, you're more than likely not going to really hurt your lower back, more than likely not going to really mess up the knee too much. The weight that you're using is going to be less uh, than, you know, you might see an athlete try to handle three plates on a squat. Some of these athletes that we're talking about. And that might be, you know, too much and their knee might cave in and they might end up with some repercussions. But if they're doing a Zercher squat, 185 pounds, 225, maybe some of the stronger guys, 275, 315, probably not a huge Absolutely. issue, right? But when I'm looking at it from a global standpoint, I can get that heavy stress from a million different other ways, right? Like if I'm looking for like a technical squat, well, at the end of the day, they don't get on a platform. So I can get motor unit recruitment. I can get bone density. I can get ligament and tendon by mm -hmm. doing isometrics, overcoming isometrics. So basically pin pulls, right? Something like that. So I can get underneath, try to rip the bar through an immovable object. The amount of motor unit recruitment I get from that is, I mean, the best uh, stress you can give the human body or the heaviest stress you can give to the human body is a failed deadlift. Mm. That's what we're reproducing. We're just doing it in an area where they can actually create that force. And so, and once again, going back to like a trap bar deadlift, Sure. It's just basically the same as a Zercher squat when you really break it down. Yeah. You just have a limited range of motion. Here, this is what we did last time I was here. I love a Hatfield squat. Absolutely. Why? Because they can manipulate whatever they need to manipulate to get a decent range, 
and to get a decent load. Mm -hmm. Tell us what a Hatfield squat is for people that can't see the... Yeah, absolutely. So basically, this is where we take a safety squat bar, put it on our back, right? So now I'm hands-free. So what can I do with those hands? I can support myself so that I can have great posture and I can bail myself out whenever I need. So I love using it for over-utilizing the eccentrics. So in other words, no hands on the way down. So I'm just assisting myself get to the bottom of the squat, and then use my hands as necessary to get out of the hole mm. and to get through the concentric. And we had a band. The thing that we're showing here is like the squat regression that we did with uh, Ben Patrick as well. We got a band kind of hooked to the rack, and you can utilize the band in whatever way that you feel that you need to get you out of the bottom. Now, when I use that at Stanford, like most of the people are using like something like stiff, right, like a barbell. Yeah. I like the band because as a coach, I want to know how much they're using their hands mm. so that band the further i see it drop down the more i'm like you know they're saving themselves <laughs> mm -hmm. like okay maybe we need to back off the load or yo he he, he actually did that yeah. so that gives me almost like another um another metric to look at other than tonnage mm -hmm. i'm looking at actual effort and so now i can see how they're using it Power Project Family, how's it going? Now, on this podcast, we talk a lot about getting great sleep. We've done countless podcasts on it. We almost talk about sleep every single podcast because of how important it is for your recovery, for your fat loss, for your muscle gain, all of that good stuff. That's why we've partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. Now, Eight Sleep Mattress has something called the Pod Pro Cover, which you can place upon your own mattress or one of Eight Sleep Mattresses. And the cool thing about the Pod Pro Cover is that it has dynamic cooling and heating through the night. Now your body's circadian rhythm and your body's temperature changes through the night and the mattress cover or the pod pro cover changes in accordance to that so that you get the best sleep of your life. Some people like myself, sweat when mm -hmm. we sleep. I sometimes have woken up in puddles and I thought I pissed myself. <laughs> but because of the pod pro cover, it regulates my temperature through the night so I wake up feeling refreshed, and dry and that's also great for my partner anyway andrew how can people get a hold of the pod pro cover yes you guys got to head over to eight sleep.com slash power project that's e-i-g-h-t sleep slash power project and you guys will automatically receive 150 dollars off the pod pro cover or the pod pro cover and mattress combo again that's at eight sleep.com slash power project no code needed you guys will see a, cross, a banner across the top saying that you're going to receive 150 dollars off your order um, again so no code for that just head over to that link ASAP links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. You know, with how different these NBA bodies are, uh, I'm curious to know, you've been working with the Suns now for three years, and when you see new incoming players, young guys, um, do you notice any type of difference in the way that they move structurally just because we, we've had a lot of coaches come onto the podcast and one of them, Jim Wendler, uh, works with a lot of teenagers, a lot of high school students, and he noticed that there's a, a much there's like a much higher occurrence of younger students because of like technology, because they're not doing as much, even though they play sport outside of sport, it's sedentary, it's phone, it's iPad. Um, they just have much weirder type of inefficiencies as far as mm -hmm. the way that they move. Do you notice that with young guys coming in from college or not really? Man, I don't know. I'll say this. Most people that are getting more serious about sport get mm. more serious about sports performance at a younger age. Uh, and if, they, if they're even somewhat capable, like I got a chance to get a scholarship or I got a chance to make it to the league, someone's grabbed them at some point. You're right. Now, with whatever methodology they use, that's whatever, right? <laughs> and depending on their success and depending on a lot of other things, you know, some of them get bypassed. They're just like, hey, man, just don't get hurt. Hey, man, like just, just get here. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we'll take care of you. And then that trickles in too. So then you got guys that have been in the league for three or four years and they still have a zero training history. And you're just sitting there like, wow, like I kind of figured that would have happened at mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. But due to a ton of environmental reasons, it didn't happen. So there's a whole spectrum there. Makes yeah, I, I noticed like when I was coaching high school that uh, just having someone try to have their back be flat during a lift was very difficult and then I was like, well, maybe they can straighten their legs out more, like when they go to bend down to pick up the bar. And I noticed that their body would really tremble a lot and shake. And these were these are these are athletes that they weren't destined to right. be, you know, uh, high, real high level. And so they haven't tapped into any of that. And there was no one around to kind of say, hey, listen, uh, you know, you're six seven and you're fifteen. <laughs> Right. We need to get you on a program, <laughs> right. you know, and, and we need to get you. So a lot of these kids, they were suffering from, you know, being in their chairs a lot and being on their phones a lot. And when they did 
go to do something like a deadlift, they thought their hamstrings were going to like explode off their body. And I'm like, how is this so? Like, I am pretty tight, but I wasn't that tight when I was that young. Right. Crazy. Well, the one thing that I think is, is now an emergence in, in the field and trickling down to general population is just better movement strategies. Yeah. Right. And just being able to move your own body weight. Like, I get you had a Ben on, you mm -hmm. know, like ben I mean, Patrick, yep. I mean, working through full ranges of motion, great. You know, you don't need a lot of resistance. Great. I think that's greater for the youth anyways in a lot of ways because I would rather take somebody who's fully capable through full ranges of motion through all their joints than taking someone who's trying to learn how to do a 300-pound clean with terrible form. Mm. And then once they get to me, I got to reteach all that. Mm. So this emergence in calisthenics, I mean, this is PE class yeah. from the 50s. You know, now this is becoming the thing. Fantastic. Makes uh -huh. my job a lot easier. 